I wanted to make something more toxic than Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Well, uh, rejection, here's, hearsay. Wait, you, you asked the question. Okay. Oh. Next question. Okay. I did some experimenting with creating a new type of base that I could use. If you like the look of this base, hit that subscribe button and let's crack on with how I created this oozing monstrosity. In a shocking turn of events, you're going to see me use an airbrush in this video. I'm sick of those little spiders attacking me when I go to prime in my garage during the winter, so I'm taking this for a spin today. Obviously, like myself a few days ago, a rattle can of white primer would do the job just fine, but either way you go, just give the base a quick prime with white. Now as I've gone to the effort of sitting at a slightly different desk to use my airbrush, I'm going to stick at it for a little bit of time and do the rest of the colours this way. However, these could just be applied with a brush, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Now that we've got a bright white primer applied, it will work beautifully as a base to start making a bright, glowing, toxic base with. We'll apply Jungle Green from the Army Painters Air range, give it a quick coat, and then once that is dry, apply a second coat and you get a really nice bright green base coating applied evenly all over the base. Next up we'll add the last colour, you heard that right, the last colour, we're almost done. Here I am using Neon Yellow, it's another one from the Air range, and this neon colour is brighter than the headlights at my local dogging site. You can spray this one all over the green or just in some random patches, either way it's going to work fine for what we're doing. Patches will add slightly more variety to the underlying toxic waste and doing it all over evenly will give you a sort of brighter, stronger look. One cool variation I didn't try was making it brighter and brighter in the centre of the base, giving it a kind of real focal point. Let me know if you think that would look better or if you've tried it yourself in the comments below. Here we go, here we go, satellite radio. Here we go, here we go, satellite radio. This is how we're looking after all the airbrushing and leaving it to dry. It's really, really bright and it's a really, really nice, vivid, greeny yellow colour. Frankly, I think this is a great base of colour to work from. Now, as previously mentioned, if you don't own an airbrush, A, this one only cost me about 40 quid all in, so might be worth considering. I'll drop a link in the description below. But B, you can also apply this paint with a brush or find, you know, some brush on alternative neon colours. Brushing this on is just like using a very, very thin paint and you need to build it up in multiple layers, applying it directly over a white primed base. Build this up coat after coat. I did mix up the directions of my brush strokes just to make it look a little bit more even, but we'll be covering it all up shortly. So rough and ready is really just going to work. That's the green looking pretty good. It did take around five quick coats and you can definitely still see the brush strokes in my slap hazard demonstration, but you'll see those vanish by the time we finish this base. Next up is the same step as with the airbrush, it's the neon yellow. And just like before, slap this on one coat at a time until you're happy with the brightness levels. Once again, you could apply this in patches for variations if you'd like the waist to look a little bit more uneven underneath or evenly across the miniature if you want it to have a slightly brighter, more even look. Now that is both versions done and to be honest there's not that much difference in the time doing one over the other. If you're only painting one base, setting up and cleaning the airbrush takes about as long as a bunch of coats with the brush. Having said that, the airbrush one does look that little bit brighter which is absolutely sick. It makes me want to try out even more of the neon colours in the range and even some different brands. Let me know any recommendations of colours or brands in the comments below. Next up, I'm going to do something different to normal and I really would recommend adding a layer of glue on top of the paint. I've skipped over this step in the past and people have asked me in the comments below if they should or shouldn't use glue. And it's finally bit me in the ass and I've seen the crackle paint dry and rip the paint underneath clean off the base. So from now on, I'll be adding a super quick layer of PVA glue, which dries clear and gives that paint that little bit of protection. I squirted a bit of glue directly on the base to spread it around. And just like your mum last night, I squirted way too hard. You don't need very much glue, so I cleaned a load of it off and spread a very thin layer over it all. Once the glue is fully dry, we're on to doing the magic. We're going to take a pot of Mordant Earth, the black crackle paint by Citadel, and we're going to be adding a generous layer over the top of this base. As I say every time, I'm yet to apply this paint too heavily, but too thin can lead to very unimpressive cracks. I tend to add myself a good millimetre or so. After that, it's just a waiting game. Sit back and relax while you wait for this to dry.
it does take quite some time. My new mini game is seeing if I can paint another miniature before this paint has dried, and I fixed up one of my slayers while waiting. Inception painting is the Gigabrain move. There we go, guys. That's the Crackle paint completely dry. You can see there's not actually that much in between the two versions, but the airbrush version does come out that little bit brighter. But hopefully this was also a solid demonstration. If you do only have a brush, you can still achieve amazing results. I'm also 100% sure if you look in the comments right now, someone will kindly have recommended a brush on neon paint that works just as well and is a lot more brush friendly. In terms of actual painting we're just left with a nice evening rim job to complete grab some matte bra grab yourself some matte oh grab yourself some matte back oh. grab yourself some matte black paint and just go all the way fuck my life <laughs> and just go all around the side of the base and just go all around the side of the base base is all rimmed and it's looking bloody cool just look at these very clean very crisp looking kind of toxic plague like bases while these bases look great by themselves i think what will really finish off this video will be adding some miniatures to the tippity top of them for these two bases i'm going to take a couple of necrons i've painted previously cut them off of their bases and then i think i'll scratch off a little bit of paint here so i can get to the underlying plastic using some plastic glue to reattach these necrons directly on top of these toxic bases. And there we have it. I think that was the final piece we needed to add. And both the miniatures and the base now look absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with this. And it was a few minutes work. Now you could batch paint these and crack out even more. You'd be quite efficient, especially if you're using an airbrush. And you'd really, really bring down the time it takes to do these. I'd definitely consider doing these for a Necron army or perhaps even a Plague Marine army. Let us know down below as always what you might use these bases for and anything else you would like to see produced base wise or otherwise on the channel now don't forget to subscribe to us as we climb to 100,000 subscribers every 10,000 subscriber milestones we're going to be picking one of you for a free mega set of speed paint and then when we hit the final 100,000 goal one of you will find yourselves on the receiving end of the complete speed paint set you've watched it now go and paint it